my tumbler machine is still going, so that's the rumbling you can possibly hear in the video. Um, since I just did all that slip trailing on the teapots, I thought I would make a couple of the pieces that I used to do years ago um, and um, give you an idea of the slip trailing technique. So this is the same white slip I posted in my recipes a little while ago, um, about a month or so ago. And it, I've just mixed it up, so this one's a little runny, so I've got to be careful it doesn't drip. So I'm basically putting in an area to slip trail over. So we've got dark red clay, a band of white, and you can keep going on that, but you have to be careful it doesn't drip, like it just did. But that's easy, sponge it out. So the slip is pretty runny, and that's the issue when you're doing something like this. It's got a slip without it dripping. This is a bit better now. I'm going to be slip trailing, slip trailing over this white. So I'm just trying to give myself some base colors to do the slip trailing on, and then I'll leave the center of the piece brown. And this is runny too, so you've got to just time it right before you get that drip. Kind of leave a brown line just between the black and the white. So when I slip trail on these areas now, it just gives me different kind of contrasting areas. That's, that makes it more interesting. And I also have a yellow slip I could use. We don't want to go overboard. So, to let this sit for a while now. So when you're going to slip trail, there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind. This piece is soft, and you can bend it. And that's sort of the best way it can be, because the slip bonds molecularly with the, the clay that's underneath it. If you do it too dry, there's a chance that slips can flake off, um, but uh, I've actually got away with it right up to the point of almost leather hard, um, and it still works. But the softer it is, the better. But the problem is, if it's soft, it's absorbing moisture from the slip, so it gets even softer. Uh, and so at, at some point, the clay becomes saturated and it will collapse. And you can only guess that through ex you know, experience. And um, so I'm going to do a little bit of this, and then I'll let it dry for an hour or two, and then I'll come back and do a bit more. So I'm going to put you on stop motion so you can see. But basically, bang your slip bottle down. Every time you actually put go to apply slip, just tap it so upside down so you get the liquid coming out of the nozzle, and then you don't have any air trapped in the nozzle, which could spit and, and cause you a problem. So, uh, so let's get you on stop motion now. It wants to dribble, 
So I only made two small mistakes. That one I can get rid of by trimming the white up a little bit further. And I picked up the wrong slip trail and dribbled yellow first instead. But it wants to run, so I'm putting that there. So if it does want to have a little bit build up on the nib, I'm going to be able to just drop it into there where I will put a sponge that I can actually rub the nozzle on. And that way we can perhaps get um, a handle on the dribbling. got to the point where the, the, the piece is getting a bit wet so there's nowhere I can slip trail now where I want a slip trail where it isn't wet right next to it and that would be a problem because the colors can bleed into each other at that point so you can't really do that um, until this has gone matte so as soon as you see no shine you can then continue slip trailing a bit more um, I made a couple of blunders which I don't think will be a problem I had to sponge a little bit up in that place but I'm going to slip trail over that whole area in there uh, I'm probably going to paint a little band of yellow slip so that would hide that little mistake um, and this one over here I still have to figure out what to do with it because it's just tiny but it is there but then uh, the Amish isn't the Mennonites um, always do these big quilts and they always make one little mistake in each piece so they're not perfect I think there's a religious reason for that but anyway it's um, coming along this piece is a little soft at the moment, so I'm not going to slip trail, but I am going to put another little thin coat of white over there because it's a bit faded. I think I can make that a bit more opaque, but that's why this is getting soft on the rim again because I'm actually adding a whole layer of moisture to that inside area, preventing it from drying. And I'll do the same thing here, just give a slight thicker coat over there so it doesn't look faded in the finished piece. The slips can fade a little in the firing. Like porcelain is actually translucent and slip I've always found is a little translucent. So I've got to wait for this to dry too. This piece the rim is black so that'll be fairly dark anyway so I don't think I have to worry about that one fading. So I'm going to work on this one a little bit to slip trail a little pattern on here and I'll put you on stop motion again. So now even this piece is getting a little wet. You can feel by, if you touch underneath, you can feel the moisture soaking into the clay and you don't want to go past because you'll end up with a split and the rim collapses out um, when you build up too much water on a rim. Uh, the center is not as big a deal, but, um, but anyway, this just has to sit till the slip surface goes matte, um, or it loses its sheen basically and its gloss and then you know you can slip trail a little bit more because there's still some more dotting type of stuff I was going to do on it top of these pieces. What I have in this bottle is Simon Leach's uh, Greenware Slip, uh, which is 75% clay and 25% iron oxide. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to see how it works mixed in with my other slips as well. Remembering that I'm going to be playing with 10 Maku glazes on these pieces anyway. <clears throat> so I want to see how well it slip trails. Pretty nice. Oh, it's dripping.
that's one way of getting rid of a mistake. It's a bit drippy, so I'm going to have to plan for that. I can't put anything in the center, so I'm going to have to be extra careful. Because it's sometimes, if you can see a drip coming, because your face is right next to it, you can actually you know, take it over somewhere and let it drip. But I may have to just go out with it, over the edge of it. What I need is a sponge in my other hand here. Yeah. So it worked okay, I just had to plan for the little drip thing, because it's, it, um, I can thicken up all of these slips if I want to, just by adding um, magnesium uh, Epsom salts, basically, uh, or vinegar would thicken up the slip too, but I try to do keep that to the minimum, because if I keep thinning it, I keep thickening it, you know, I think there could be a point where it's changed.
Now that's a lot of slip, so I am definitely going to have to wait and see how this goes. I may end up sticking toilet rolls underneath a little bit. Um, you know, just wedging them in, that holds the rim up a little bit. Because that's a lot of liquid to have on here. So this piece is now getting um, almost done. Um, I think what I'm going to do is wait for this area I just did to dry and then I'll do some black and maybe some uh, white in that area or maybe black and brown um, and that one will be done but it's just a bit wet at the moment. But I recommend working on three, four pieces at a time so that uh, you can let one dry. Um, and work on the other three and when you come back to it you know you'll end up being an hour later or something and you can do some more on it and that way you'll keep a flow going in your studio. Okay, I um, these are very soft on the bottom there because I'm actually denting it by just doing that. But they're stiff enough up here, and I'm going to try slip trailing on a few of these as well because these are going to be my test pieces. So let's just play. Remember, we're trying to see what the ten lapoos will do. Got a sponge underneath them. I'm learning because you keep the nozzle keeps building up with clay. If I was really good, I wouldn't touch the surface. That was a better line there. I think you can see what we've got going on there and that's my black slip so that just has black underglaze in it so I'm not sure that would affect the Tenmoku uh, but I don't know what they have in the underglaze if it's an iron base for a black or is it a cobalt I'm not sure and my suspicion is the black that I use in this is probably um, cobalt oxide in there Now this is the Simon Leach iron. <clears throat> Just playing, remember? Oh, it's going to drip in. It did drip. Good job it wasn't a flat surface. I'm hoping the Tenmaku is actually 
end up with a little transparency, sort of not transparent, but sort of a semi opacity, <coughs> translucent, I guess. But. So we see a lot of this stuff through, but it's not very strong. I'm just hoping this one wants to drip now, too. Very difficult on a vertical surface. Let's say we started running on the other side when we get down there. Oh, sort of held together. So we'll see what that looks like. I'm going to play. I've got a bunch of these to play with, so I'll just put it on stop motion again. Sorry for the noise in the background, that's still that tumbler going after a day and a half it's been running now. Um, but um, at the same time as making the teapots, I made a whole bunch of tea bowls, about 15 of them I guess here, uh, 8, 12, 16. Um, and I used the same slips to actually um, you know, just randomly decorate them. Um, and we're going to use these as the tests for the different ten makus to see how they work. Um, and I've got 16, so I might be able to do some others as well. Maybe do um, a couple of the other glazes I have to see how they work with the slips, like the green. And um, I'm not sure if the blue would work, but it just it's just for fun. You know? But I got a bunch of these odd shaped tools and scraffito tools. That I thought we should kind of play with as well since um, you know this is just for fun so just make some mops and all that it's just not nice to sort of add to these I mean who knows maybe these will be really nice but uh, but I'm just going to play with this and then I'll trim these but um, but this is leather hard clay, obviously, now, because it falls right off as you make a mark. I don't know what this is for. I found it somewhere, and it's a nice... I've always thought it'd be kind of cool to make some textures on the fish. But that's the idea. Play with all these and see what I come up with.
Okay, I am going to trim these pieces now. They're actually perfect this morning. Um, and I'm going to use the trimming tools that Bill Wright sent me. And some of them are profile foot tools. And I've left a fairly decent thickness here, so I can actually trim quite a bit. Um, but let's get uh, the trimming tool first. See how well it does. And these pieces, uh, these trimming tools work great on leather hold clay. I'll just try these all out and then I'll put on a sort of uh, stop motion to do the rest. But they're nice trimming tools. I have a sharp, two sharpening stones that I use just to sharpen these up a little bit after I've been trimming for a while. That's pretty quick. I got them from Lee Valley Tools. So basically the trimming is just to kind of give you a flat foot and then you can put in the profile tool to actually put the foot in completely. I don't usually have to trim much with my pieces because I throw very thin. some nice speckles in there. This clay, I forgot, has a, um, it's like a white speckle. I'm not sure what they used to get that. And then this one is that profile. So I push it down, put my finger on the top of the foot, and then put my finger on top of the tool, and then I press it in. So I've kind of I've got a, a um, through practice, a set distance that that is. Because at first when I was doing it, it was kind of leaving a sharp edge to the foot, which I thought would definitely get tripped. Um, chipped very easily. So that gives me a really nice double ring there. And then we may as well, since we've actually, see what this would do for some chattering. I haven't used this one for a long time. We go at it from different angles, I guess. Random chattering. Uh, let's see, I like the flat one here. This is one of my favorite chattering ones that Bill makes. I'm just doing that light to kind of knock off any sharp points because this has kind of a random look to the chattering. I ran up several times, so um, is it smooth everywhere? Pretty good. the foot we got with it. A funky tea bowl. So I'm going to do the rest. Play around with chattering tools and profile tools for the feet. Uh, but I'll put you on stop motion now. <laughs> 